Hi everyone, Mama Maru here, back with another video today. And today I was going to go over my daughter's preschool learning binder. This covers year 2020 and 2021. She's going to be starting kindergarten in August. So we have this binder that I made for her. I've been watching a bunch of videos by certain people about these binders that are magnificent. Every single day when I was homeschooling, I'd have to find and print brand new worksheets every day and this binder just made it an easy way for me to keep track of what she does every day as long as we do what's in the binder we complete all of our goals so in here first we have this pocket here and the side pocket this is just something she gets out all the time to practice things with so we'll just go ahead and keep this out some place easy for her to pick up in case she's tracing on a separate piece of paper this we have, my daughter's obsessed with caterpillars. She made a caterpillar in preschool. So every time she masters a letter sound, we put it on her chart and she gets a prize at the end. Same with numbers, she masters her numbers and she gets a prize at the end on another caterpillar. And this is gonna be a book chart I found at the library for reading books. After you get to 100, you get a prize at the end. So as you can probably tell, this binder is like a little overloaded. Uh, so one and a half inch, I probably should have gotten a two inch or bigger because you can tell it's a little past its limit. I'm probably going to have to transfer everything to a bigger binder. So just a quick tip, get a big one. There's quite a bit in here though that she loves to do and this binder was definitely worth the investment and everything it took to make it. So this is her chore chart. I made one for her older brother and she was really jealous and she wanted me to make her chore chart. So I was more than happy to, and every day she it's a great way to introduce the binder. She wakes up, first thing she does every morning is open this so she can check mark all the boxes. She feels accomplished. Great way to start your day. First thing you should do every morning is make your bed. It makes my house feel clean, it makes her room look clean, and it's a great way to get started for the day is to create a clean, happy environment around yourself first. So she starts off with this chore chart, which she loves. So the next thing in the binder should definitely be a list of our goals. Everything in this binder should be towards a purpose, purpose driven. So this is her list of pre-K things that she needs to accomplish by the end of pre-K. And I also have one in here for the list of what she needs to do to prepare for kindergarten. And some things are the same, but some things are just a little different. Like here it says 10 words. She needs to know 10 words. And on this one, she needs to know 30 words. So small differences, but everything in this binder is gonna be to complete these goals. Now it's the All About Me page. And it's, this All About Me page is important for her to learn self-awareness. So she'll write her name and then she can outline her handprint. She'll know how old she is. She can write how many candles are supposed to be on her cake. And then she'll go into her favorite color, her favorite food, her eye color, her hair color. Is it short or long hair? Just self-awareness. This is a safety page. It talks about what is hot and what is not. So she should know all the things that are hot and things she's not supposed to touch in the house. So obviously you guys don't know my phone number, but this is how do you call mommy? How do you... I mean, it used to be your phone number when everybody had landlines, but now everybody has cell phones. So if you ever need to call mommy, you need to know mommy's number, know your number. And she's mastered this. She knows my phone number. And I even practice, have her practice dialing it up here, like have her dial the numbers up here. So in case she doesn't have these, because she used to put up the ending and the beginning numbers first. So practice dialing it, always know how to get home. My name is, and know my phone number. And then we start out singing our Adams Family song every day. So we'll go, there's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday, days of the week, days of the week. So we have an Adams Family song. You guys should research it. She loves, absolutely loves doing the Adams Family song, 200 days of the week. And so here's um, seven days. So seven words just right here that she can learn. And she needs to know 10 words in preschool. And so here's seven words right here. And then I'm not gonna sing this whole song, but we do a song for months of the year also. 
It's Blippi, B-L-I-P-P-I. -P -P -I. I had no idea what that was until my kids took me to the store and they picked out same, uh, a bottle of bubbles, Blippi bubbles for the bathtub. And I had to research who this was and I found a Blippi Month of the Year song, which they absolutely love. So we do that. And she doesn't have all these memorized, but she can follow along and read most of these months. And this was a quick way this one is easy. You just circle the day of the week, the month of the year, and then circle the month, the day of the month. And then the next page that we're advancing her to is to write it. Not just circle it, but then write it. Circle it and write it. And be, start working on those writing skills. So it is February right now. She should be able to find where to find the days of the week on the calendar, where to find the day of the month on the calendar and the year, and locate those things when looking at a calendar. But we also have a place where she can write, what is the weather today? How do I feel today? And then this one is more feelings that I found on Google. I love this. But what we do with this is more of like a bingo. Like we use these little bingo chips. And I'll ask her, uh, quiz her kind of about learning new feelings like frustrated, disappointed, aggressive, word, words and feelings that she might not know yet. And then writing your name. This is writing, and there's little small arrows here that will tell you the direction to write the number and letter correctly. So uppercase, lowercase, and numbers one to 10. Here's another bingo page. This is just something I wrote out, random letters in there. And she, this was just to learn what they look like just by hearing it. And so more bingo chips. And then this is, we sing the song on this one. So A, B, C, and then she'll sing the song. She'll start at A and she sings the song because she's got that memorized. Now she just needs to memorize what they look like by sight, um, be able to also bring it back from your memory and write what it looks like. And she's doing really good with this. She sings a song and fills this in all the way down. These are all capital letters. We also have another one here, a ghost one, for lowercase letters. And then we have another Valentine's one here. I thought this was really cute. Um, so I know that they wanted you to cut this out, but what we'll do is she has to see this and figure out where it goes. And so instead of singing the song, she has to just look at this and try to figure it out. And then she'll cross it out with an expo marker and write it where it goes. And this is beyond her favorite activity in this whole book. She loves band-aids. I can't keep them in the house. I had a little first aid kit. Band-aids always come up missing. She'll band-aid herself everywhere. She'll band-aid every single doll she has. You'll never have band-aids in this house. Anyways, ended up finding this boo-boo bear is what she calls it. So it's just matching capital letters. And we also have another page in the back, back here for when I want to cut it out. It's already laminated of lowercase letters. So she can learn to match up right in lowercase. But right now it's just capital letters. And so there's some more on the back here that goes on this one. She absolutely loves it. It's interactive. All of the ones that have Velcro on it are the ones that she will pick up this binder and go sit down and just start doing the interactive Velcro pages multiple times a day. This boo boo bear, she would do it probably four or five times in a row. And she gets so proud of herself when she's done. This pizza page I just printed last week. So it's all capital letters here and then all the toppings are lowercase letters and she has to match the lowercase letters like a small T to the uppercase T and she loves it. It's a fun way for her to be interested in it because some things are just boring. And, um, so my niece and nephew are both into Pokemon or were at some point and she wants to be just like both of them. She loves Pokemon. She thinks they're cute little characters. And so I found these are lowercase letters and here's Pokeballs. So I have, like I said, with the Boo Boo Bear page, I have upper and lowercase ones. The lowercase ones, because it's lowercase here, I have not cut those out. They're still back here in another page. These Pokeballs are all uppercase. So she can put the Pokeball on the dot and then match. And onto this page, now we're getting into phonics. Letter sounds, not just matching and writing, but this is the barn, and here's animals. So a uh, rooster, or rooster starts with R. So here's an R, and you have to match it according to the sound. And she loves farm animals. We plan on visiting a farm. I found one locally that we're gonna go to this summer. She loves a 
every pumpkin patch we go to there's always some farm animals she can play with and she wants to keep every one of them she would own a zoo if she could so she loves animals and loves that farm animal page more letter sounds this is for valentine's day for february and every month i would plan on changing this out like in december have a gingerbread house or they had one with snowmen and stockings or next month in march it's all about leprechauns and rainbows so I'll probably change this sheet out to uh, rainbows, something like that, because she loves rainbows and unicorns. But right now it's Valentine's Day themed. So you, this is all about beginning sounds. And then more beginning sounds here for Valentine's Day. I would like to add in another page of middle sounds and then another worksheet for ending sounds. So usually what we do is use candy. Um, you can use an Expo marker but the kids like the candy, it's motivational, and I let her eat a piece after she masters the whole page. So we'll get like her favorite candy. Usually she likes gummies, and uh, so I'll get gummies. You can use also like little bingo chips. We got those hearts from the dollar store, the heart candies, and they're the same shape. So she can put the hearts on there, and then she'll eat a, one candy when she's done with the whole page or, you know, gummies. And then this one is another beginning sound one, but this is a Velcro one. Um, so we'll have S, and that goes to the back page here on the back side. But, um, so there's two bags, one's for the back side, one's for the front side, just to make it easier on mommy. So E says eh, and then eh, eh, elephant. And so I might say, I'll ask her, Kenzie, what is this? And she'll say, it's a butterfly. And I'll say, butterfly starts with what, Kenzie? And she'll go, buh, and find this, the right letter. And I don't overwhelm her and put all the letters in front of her. I'll put like three or four in front of her at first. And she'll pick the one out of that. And it's confusing because like C says K and K says K. So when all the letters are in front of her, it's a little confusing. So I just put three or four in front of her. And as she gets better with this, and we'll advance her, of course. But she loves cookies. She loves the cookie jar. And... I love this activity. It's one that she can do on her own because she knows what all these, the names of all these things are, except for maybe violin. That's kind of a hard one. And then we're going from letter sounds to syllables. There really wasn't a, a correct place to organize this and put it into the binder, so it just kind of random spot. Here are syllables and rhyming. And now we're going from phonics to sight words. I wish I had dividers in this because I have like divided between all about me, then the calendar pages, and then letters, and then phonics, and now we're into sight words. So, and they say in preschool you should be able to say 10 sight words, and then in kindergarten 30 sight words. And, you know, the numbers, that's 1 through 10, that's 10 sight words, colors, that's 10 sight words, or days of the week, that's 7 sight words. So, here's uh, the Dolch free primer list and you can start her off with like three words or five words a week one word a day or you can give her the whole list of five words at the beginning of the week um, what I did I picked a chart here is the first set of ten words we're going to be working on and I just grab plain index cards from the dollar store and I write these on the index cards here one obviously one word on each side or just one on each card and I'll put them in a pocket board and we'll practice them that way. We can make a song out of them. You can have her write them down multiple times. But so every time she masters a list, we're gonna keep it in here to keep quizzing her on. And then um, we'll add another list and another list and another list. And they'll all be here. So it's not gonna come out until she goes up to the next grade. But um, it's all here so she can continue practicing her old words every day even when she learns a new one, so you don't want her to forget those. And this is something I tried really hard to find. I saw it on Pinterest, and the person that was selling it was wanting like $8 on Teacher Pay Teachers to do the color words. And then I came across this chart after searching on Google. And I love it. You take the crowns and you just match them to the color words. So. It's a fun interactive way and she knows like this entire front page and a few on the back so like i said here's 10 words right here so she's met her goal and we're going to 
continue to keep meeting more goals and expanding and learning more colors. And then here's numbers, one through 10. And so I might have her say them in order and then I'll just point to random numbers, make sure she knows them out of order. There's 10 more words. And then this just turned out to be blank. I didn't have anything on the back of this one and this is a special, it needs to be like this because this is an, an activity that I just came up with and I absolutely love it. So I just got a pack of your first words, flashcard set or CBC words. It's a consonant, vowel, consonant, so CBC. And I, this is a laminated, just plain white paper. And then this is um, just A through Z chart I found on Google. Any chart will work. And then I, I printed two and laminated both and I cut all these letters out and velcroed them and then uh, that way it's easy setup for her and then there's three dots so vowel it's consonant vowel consonant CVC and then you'll take this card it's got the word on it so I need it to be hidden and I just this is an index card that I just taped here wanted it to be taped so she it could cover and so this is a box. She knows all these flashcards. These are flashcards that we've had for years, even when she was little. So box, b, b ox. So b ox. So she has to say what letter says b. It's a b. So we'll take the b and you'll put it over here. Ah. What letter says ah? And then x. Not s, but x. Try to make a difference in, differentiation in that sound. X. So she'll spell it. But ox. And you want to not make it choppy. But ox. But box. And have it all blend together. Then she has to put the letters back where they go. So it's also her learning the alphabet, learning the letter order. You can even take all these off and have her put them on and figure out letter order and sequencing, and then you could even uh, go through and say ah, b, k, d, e, and have her memorize her letter sounds. So there's a lot you can do with this. There's a bunch. You can even, as she gets more into spelling, advance this and put another dot, redo these, and obviously put four or five dots on here. And then you could, um, for her spelling words, just say it and have her sound out that word or do a picture of it and have her sound out that word and even use this for spelling later on when they get into spelling in second and third grade. So I love this. I'm doing it with my son. It helps him learn reading, sequencing, sounds, everything. This is one of my favorite activities. And then she's obsessed with gingerbread men, with elves, unicorns, and rainbows. That's her thing. And ladybugs. So I found these gingerbread men opposite sheets and she loved them. I had to put them in here. It's obviously it's more sight words for her to learn and you could even take index cards and set them out and have her match the card to which one it is to the opposite it is but we had a bunch a stack of these and she went through color crazy coloring with permanent markers and ruined a bunch of them so I need to print more of these if uh, my binder could hold up to it I need a bigger I need a bigger binder and then this was the very first thing we printed for this binder the very first we had a bunch of these papers um, that we would do every day, but this is what initially started this binder. I found this sheet on Teachers Pay Teachers. It was expensive, so I found it available for free through another website, and I can't tell you how much she loves cookies. She has a cookie jar toy with cookies, and they have chocolate chips on the front and the number on the back, and it's the toy at her preschool and I thought about getting her one and then I found it was like $25 on Amazon and I was like well what if there's something she could do every day and have it like in you know I found this printable that was free and it's the same thing she loves it so much and she doesn't ask me for the toy anymore but it's right here she can do it multiple times every day learned her numbers 1 through 10 I wish they had one with numbers 1 to 20 maybe I'll find one later or more numbers than that because it's a fun interactive way she loves cookies she loves baking with me she loves this. And then there's also one to 10 sight words. So I didn't know if I should put that, the sight word, um, the one to 10 sight words here with all her other sight words. 
or if I should put it here with the cookie jar, um, the organizing thing. But I want the cookie jars together because the cookies are together. I could always print another sheet of cookies and put it this with the sight words with the other bag up there and just split them up. But now we're in math. That puts us in the math section. So we're learning numbers one to 10. Here's filling in your numbers one to 20. I could make this interactive with Velcro dots. I could print the numbers that are missing on a worksheet and uh, try to cut them into hearts and do it interactive. But I really need her to start learning to write her numbers. So some of these need to be interactive with Velcro. Some of them need to be writing. And then this is the number before and after. And then this is something we usually take out. This is a graph, one to 10. It's upside down, but it does not matter because I take it out of the binder when we use this, so it's okay. But um, every every holiday, we can go to the store and find little manipulatives, like small elves or whatever. But she uses these year round. These are unicorns. These are pencil erasers I got at the Dollar Tree. They're erasers, but they're unicorns and she loves them. I even found rainbows, erasers, so there's a bunch of them. Um, but it helps, you put one unicorn here and then two here and three here obviously and it helps her see the difference of two is one more than one and three is one more than two and um, it's a great way she has to learn graphing and charting later on at school and so it's a great way to introduce graphs and it's a great way for her to see her numbers one through ten visually what the number represents and she loves unicorns so and you can use it with candy you can use it with pretty much anything you can put in here and make it interactive for her. This is another bingo page. I just wrote down all these random numbers, one through 10, when we were learning them, and she can put candy on them, she can put bingo dots on them, she can use an Expo marker and cross them off, however you wanna do it. Um, and then this is an introduction to a graphing page. So some of the graphing pages that they use they have a graph at the bottom and this is instead of a graph this is just learning to write the number out so count the hearts write the number here and then this is the same except you just circle the number instead of having to write it she's mastered this page and then this is an introduction to addition so you count how many hearts are in this box write the number here count how many here write the number here count how many total and write the number here. So it's learning to set up an addition problem. So I love this and it's all Valentine's Day, February themed. And then here's introduction to subtraction. She's obsessed with donuts. Every Saturday in our house is donut day. And then she loves, of course, pizza and cookies. What kid doesn't? What? Cake and cupcakes. And cake and cupcakes. And then this is something that my son's teacher uses. It's a and 10 frame. And marshmallows. And it's ice a. Cream. It's a ten frame. So here's ten, and then we, when she gets up, masters ten. There's twenty and thirty. So you put. Um, if you get a problem, write the problem down here, or on a separate expo board, or on a separate sheet of paper, and learn to write. If I have two, two plus three. So write two, and then add three. She needs to learn the plus sign means add, and the minus sign means you cross out. And you take away. And then here is a February page that's to make 10. So she has six hearts. How many more do you need to fill up that 10 frame? It's all about making 10. And then here is kind of an intro to a number bond, but in the form of a heart. So a number bond, you have 10 at the top, four plus what equals 10. Okay, I lied. The cookie page and the boo-boo bear is not her favorite. This is her absolute, absolute favorite page in this whole binder. So we sing the song every time we do it, and I don't even need to do it with her. She sings the song. Ten little monkeys jumping on the bed. One falls off and bumps her head. And we'll take that away. And so now we don't have ten, and now she's got to find, of course, the next one is nine. And she'll put nine up there. And um, she'll sing the whole song until she gets down to zero monkeys. And it's, she counts down from ten to one. It's a great way for her to learn her numbers, learn math. And she loves these monkeys, and she even likes she'll turn them sideways and have them go to bed. Mom, they're sleeping, and they all go to bed, and she matches the monkeys, and she learns colors with the monkeys. If I could find a bunch more nursery rhyme pages like this, because I cannot tell you how much she loves to do this, that would be great if I could just find, like, there's one that's like the piggies 
this little piggy goes all the way home and it's a great way for her to learn memory and memorization. But yes, she learned her numbers 1 to 10. That's my favorite thing and it was absolutely wonderful. This is a similar concept, but she loves ladybugs. And so I have all these numbers to 20. And then these are just seeds, those little black beans that are dry. And I could even like put 10 Velcro dots here and 10 on this side and cut out spots for her to do. Or she can just do the seeds that we've, that's what we've been doing. But so we'll sing the same song. We'll go, there are 20 seeds on the ladybug. One falls off, now how many do we have? And then she has to count how many is left, and when we go down is 19, and then 18, and it does the same thing, but she has to learn her numbers to 20, and counting spots on her ladybug. And then this one, she likes to do also, another interactive thing. So we have just a little jar of pom-poms, so you can get Christmas colored ones. And she'll take all the pom-poms and she decorates her Christmas tree. She loves to do that with small ones, large ones. Even you could use beads, beans, anything you think of. You can even just use markers and just fill them in, color it in. So these are all eliminated, so they're dry erase. And then, well, at the end, color how many, or count how many red pom-poms do you have? Write it at the, at the bottom in red. How many blue ones? Write it at the bottom. So it's another counting activity, decorating activity, learning your colors, and she could even, I could decorate one side and she could decorate this whole side. So learning to match one-to-one -one correspondence and learning a sequence, learning a pattern. This is a great activity for any toddler or preschooler to learn. And then we have ladybugs. She's obsessed with ladybugs. This was a beginning activity when she didn't know her numbers one to six and she does now. Um, this is something we had laminated and we just had it in a folder before and we put it in the binder. So we'll put the black seeds um, she has to fill up each dot with a seed or with a marker, spot, or bingo chip, whatever. And then she has to copy the number and write. One represents one, two represents two. It's showing what the number represents, quantity, visualization. And then same thing over here. This is with birthday candles. So what we used to do is get little cupcake uh, papers, the whole cupcake holders that go into a, a cupcake pan. And we would roll up Play-Doh in a ball and then uh, we'd stick it in the cupcake and we would take candles. I got a bunch of candles at the Dollar Tree, all different kinds and colors of candles. And she would just stick them in and I would have a number um, card under it, uh, when learning that correspondence. But then she found this paper online and she loves this. So she'll set up the candle right where it's supposed to go and then write the number to the side. This is her learning measurement. So she has to measure how long this is it goes up to the four and then she has to write four inches and then another measurement page and now I know kids mainly need to learn numbers one to a hundred uh, in kindergarten but I found these pages on Neatlings it's one to a thousand so um, when she masters these she could write every day like my son will write one to a hundred on Monday uh, one, um, 100 to 200 on Tuesday, 2 to 300 on Wednesday, and so on. Or you could do 1 to 200 on Monday, 2 to 400 on Tuesday, until you get to 1,000. And now she just fills in the missing numbers to, as far as she can to fill in this chart. We do have a poster that's a giant um, printout of 1 to 100 on the poster. And I could put one in here, like numbers 1 to 100 in here, and she could like copy it or just fill in what she knows. Well, we have the poster, so it's not in here because we have that poster. But that's numbers one to a thousand. And, uh, you know, there's, you can always keep advancing your child until, you know, you need to add more sheets. And then this is place value. We do have another sheet in my son's binder that's expanded form. That one's a little bit harder to understand since she's not counting up to those numbers that are that high. But she knows how to do this. So, so on this one, she doesn't quite know her numbers yet. So I might write the number in for her, like 127. My son knows his number, so I'll say like 564. And so he will have to listen and write what I say, 564 up here, and figure out where these go in the chart. So seven, Kenzie writes seven here, she just copies. 
and then she knows her numbers 1 to 10 so this is essentially if you know your numbers 1 to 10 you can do this activity and then we have I wish these were laminated my son's chart has velcro dots and it's laminated so we'll have these set up like this I usually put them in a little box so how many ones do you have and she'll put in you know the seven ones all the way down how many tens do you have and she goes to the ten she'll get two tens and we'll be like okay how many hundreds do you have? Well, I just have 100, so I'll put 100 in there. And at the bottom, she might write 100 plus 20 plus 1 to learn, or plus, sorry, 7. I didn't put them all there. But learning place value, expanded form, learning that this isn't just 1, 2, and 7. This is 100 plus 20 plus 7. So this is 1, 0, 0. If these numbers weren't here, this would be a 1 and a 0, 0. So it's a great place value activity. She's really good at this. Now we're getting into skip counting, so they always start off with skip counting by tens and then fives and then even and odd numbers would be like twos, so we do by tens and then we skip count by fives and we even have a song for skip counting by fives. We go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 and we keep going that way and then obsessed with caterpillars. So we have this little we have this little caterpillar chart here where she can write in the skip counting by twos, fives, and tens and sees the difference. My son even has one that's like a little bit further. It's another page in here and it's a bunch of hearts in a row for Valentine's Day and it says uh, tens and then there's 40 and more hearts so you, just, you should be able to pick up any point in this line and skip count from 40 on, from 60 on, from 20 on. And it does that all the way down, starts at a different place in that number, in that timeline. And you should be able to count by tens through the whole thing. And then there's another one for fives and twos. And then here she has a little caterpillar. You have to write 10 to 100. And then what she'll do, this was supposed to be cut and glue, but what she'll do, she'll write 10, cross it off, write 20, cross it off until she gets to 100. And then telling time with her we're starting telling time by hour so it says what time is it so for her it's just a skip counting activity and then telling time by hour so we actually have some telling time flashcards and they're Disney so I might set one up here and I'll say Kenzie what time is it and she'll have to imitate it on the clock so right try to copy it on the clock and then copy the number digitally down here until she learns how to do that on her own and so once she masters telling time by hour, 1 to 12, then she'll go up to, you know, mastering what these numbers mean. So right now, I sing the song with her. I'll go 5, 10, and then she has to fill in the next one. We'll take all these off and then put them all back on. These are all Velcro dots to learn. So one day she can be able to say 5, 10, 15, 20 on a clock and not need these anymore. And then... They'll advance them up to being able to tell time by minutes in third grade. So you'll go 5, 10, and then add however many tally marks. So I'll have her write in all the numbers in every individual tally mark so she can understand why is this 5. There's a 1 here. Why is it 5? So when you tell time, you, this is the hour one, and this is the minute one. And you can even take a, like a permanent marker and draw circles and make it look like a sunflower or something. And then... This is an introduction to number bonds. We have a number line here, one to 10, and number bonds. So that's something my son was working on. It's something that she also has in one of her little um, kindergarten, first grade workbooks. And so you'll write 10 up here, six here, and how many do you need to complete 10? How many more do you need? Or you can just right now start her out with six and four and have her equal that. So you'll go six and then add four more, one, two, three, four, and that equals 10. So we show her here and we show her on the number line and then we have an expo board and she'll have to be able to set that problem up on the expo board, board be able to know that six and 10, six plus four equals 10. So six plus four, know that you're not writing these two numbers but learn how to differentiate where the numbers are supposed to go in a math problem from the number bond. And now we're into money. So we have this little chart here. And this chart tells you um, penny, nickel, dime, and quarter. It tells you the name, the value, the president that's on it, and the meaning. So right now we're just going over the names. And then 
to no differentiation. We'll go here and we'll get money out. And I printed out this little pig. It's a piggy bank. And we'll get money out and she has to put, she'll have to put the coins on the right coin here. And then I might even quiz her. I'll say what's, it's a nickel, penny, penny, nickel, dime, quarter, penny, 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 penny. So that quick memorization, quick recall, so where she can just quickly know what these are called. And then even after that, here's a value page. And so the values are all here. So she has like a little bit of a cheat sheet there, but it tells you the value. Put all the pennies on the one cent values. This is also a great way for kids to have an introduction into multiplication because they have to multiply. You have a nickel is five cents and you have five nickels. Five times five is 25 and so on. And then now that we're done with that, we are getting into science. I wish I had a divider here getting into science. So first thing in science is talking about food groups and knowing which ones are healthy and which ones are not. We do have a science workbook. It's 180 days of science and she and my son both like to do that. But she knows that this is cereal. Cereal is a grain and this is carrot. Carrot goes into vegetables and she knows most of her vegetables and fruits and she we just call this meat instead of protein. And she gets really mad that there's not a spoon on this page because my son's has a spoon on it, but she'll go through all of these cards and she'll put them in the right place. And I'd really like to set up a chart. I probably go I'll go on Word and I'll make a chart. Vegetables, fruit, grains, protein, dairy, and just um, make a quick document. That way I can put Velcro dots in there and just have her, I can just add dots to the back of these and have her put these in the right section so she doesn't need the plate. She can do it here on the plate or she can do it on the chart. This is all colors so she might get out a purple expo marker and write the color and then color this the right color. Then this is a goldfish so you might color it orange and then write the word in orange and then write the word red and color it red and so on and there's more on the back and this is a color blending chart so we'll get paint we we always take this out we'll get paint and we'll put blue and she has to write blue and then we'll get red paint here and blue and red mix them together and that's purple and she writes purple so it's learning what mixing colors learning the primary colors and then learning uh, if you mix them what colors come out and when you mix all of them it turns into a crap brown <laughs> systems. I think learning about your body is probably the most important thing that you can do. Everything in life, if everything collapsed in the entire world, we all need to learn how to take care of ourselves. So I think this is a really important activity for children to learn about their body. So I wanted to print a little girl page, but I don't have one. I didn't find one. My daughter is obsessed with elves, and an elf looks like a little person, of course, so she will... I might even like print another page of this so I can cut these out and velcro them so she can velcro them to the right spot. But we're also working on writing, that's a big thing we need to work on with her. So she'll, I'll read this to her and it says head. I'll say, Kenzie, where's your head? And she has to find the head and follow the arrow to the right point. And then she'll trace it and write it here. So it's a great way for her to learn more words, uh, be able to write, and the Velcro activity would just be fun. And that's the senses. Um, she has to, I'll say, Kenzie, how do you see? This is see. That's also one of her sight words on her dolch list. Kenzie, how do you see? And she'll say, my eyes. I can see with my eyes. So then she'll find I and she'll write see up here. And then you learn your five senses. And there's another page that my son has that I like a little bit better. I want to add it to this, but I'm running out of room. And this is probably one of my most favorite pages. Um, obviously, I'm a nurse, so I think learning about the body is important. But this is an introduction to the human body for her. And it blows my mind that she can name organs and know what the purpose is for. Things that a lot of people don't even know going through their entire life and not know what your liver is for. But she knows that the lungs are how you breathe. She knows which ones to put on. This was hard to cut out. I wish I could have shrank these down before I cut them and laminated them, but um, she still does pretty good with these. So if you print one of these, I shrink them first. But she knows that the lungs help you breathe, and she'll put that down first. You have to tilt it a little bit. 
heart covers it up just a little bit. Um, and then she'll know the heart pumps blood and she'll put that there. And she sticks these on. I'll have, I'll say, Kenzie, where's your heart? And she will, she'll find, she'll hand me the heart. I'll say, Kenzie, where is your heart? I'll have her point to it on her body and then she'll put it on here. That's where your heart goes. So when they're all on here the right way, um, she, I'll have her say, Kenzie, when you eat food, where does it go? And she'll say, you eat here, and it goes in a tube, and she wants to put it down the trachea. I wish there was an esophagus, but it goes down your esophagus into your stomach, and it goes into your small intestine, and she says intestine, and then she'll even draw, she'll trace with her finger how it goes here, and it's, she even does it the right way. It goes into your large intestine, and then you poop. That's what she says, learning the digestive system. I love this. Great way for her to learn about her body. And there's a Melissa and Doug magnetic set that we're going to start using to learn about muscles and bones. And we have Q-tip activities we do to learn with bones. But I love this because we never really went into organs before. I would like to even get like index cards written out with the heart written out on that. And she has to match the heart to the right index card. That would be another great way for her to learn more words, more reading activities. This is a page learning about mommies and babies. So learning about mommies and babies, I think it's important because in our science book, the 180 Days of Science, you have to go over growing, that a kitten grows into a cat, that a seed grows into a flower. And you have to know in the science book, like a flower needs sun and water and soil, or a kitten might need cat food and water. Would you feed your cat donuts? No, you feed your cat cat food. It goes over what you feed each thing. So we'll go over and we'll ask her these questions when we do it. But we also need to learn the proper names because a kitten isn't just a baby cat, it's a kitten. It's not a baby sheep, it's a lamb. It's a piglet, and it's a calf, it's a chick, it's a puppy. And then you match, the mommy is a deer, the baby is a fawn. And she has to match them. And they'll all say, okay, where do they live? And ask her questions about, she loves animals, so we could go over animals all day. We even have a habitat activity she loves to do. Um, she'd probably be a veterinarian when she grows up. She loves Doc McStuffins and she loves animals. So veterinarian, I could see it in her future. Then another science activity we love to do is our continents. So I have everything in a Velcro bag just because it was easy to poke holes and there's, they're cheap to get a bunch of them. Some people have the Velcro bags um, or they have the little Ziploc pencil pouches and it just takes up even more room in the binder I have less space for. These are thin and take up less room. But I'll have going over the seven continents and then there's some pages by JDA. I would love to get over 50 states once she masters these. But here's seven continents and I'll say Kenzie which one is Africa? And she'll find Africa. She'll have to learn what that word is. And she doesn't get them all right the first time, but some of it, she knows these two. She knows Antarctica and Africa. And we're gonna keep learning the rest of them. And then she'll put Africa just to find where it goes. And then we might, my son has a globe, so we'll go find on the globe where it goes. And there's even a, a um, blow up globe in the shape of a ball at the Dollar Tree that we got. We'll show her on that globe, or she has to show me on that globe, where's Africa? Or we'll get out a little poster board that has a map on it. Where's Africa on the sphere globe? So, and then I'll ask her what's all this. And you could even go as far as to print out and do oceans. Not just continents, but oceans. And a little puzzle. Learning uh, <laughs> more words for her. Learning the names of the continents. Learning oceans and bodies of water. And she loves filling it out. They absolutely love doing this little activity. And then once she masters this, I always think about what we're going to advance it to, what we're going to do next. So after she learns all her seven continents, I would advance her and go to the 50 states. And someone has it, the 50 states blown up to where they just have one segment, um, the east coast and then the west coast and then the, the middle states and then southern states. They have, it's a matching activity just like this. When she learns the names of all of them, she can hand them all to me and match them where they go. Then we would advance her to the next state portion, like the southern portion and the west coast, until she learns all 50 states. And then here's her solar system. These are on there because she just, she does this one obviously every day. And so I'll ask her, Kenzie, can you hand me Jupiter? And she'll 
um, have to be able to read or at least know by sight what color that planet is. So I'll go Jupiter. She matches the words up together, so it's Jupiter. And then I'll say, Kenzie, where's the sun? And the sun's here. And I'll say, how many planets away from the sun is Jupiter? And she'll, Jupiter is one, two, three, four. It's the fifth planet from the sun. So learning other questions about our solar system, it's a great way for her to learn our planets, learn that Earth. So this is our world. And she'll go, Mom, this is our world, Mom. And we live on this one. And then uh, I'll say, Kenzie, which one, which planet do we live on? And she'll say, Earth. We'll live on Earth. And then that's our last science page. There's some of these that, you know, she just does these for fun. She'll, all these Velcro pages, she does nonstop. Like I said, it, if I could get dividers and put them in to separate the math, the science, from the sight words and phonics, I could go on and on and on about how much I love this binder, how much she has learned since we started this binder. I love it. It's obviously too small. I need to get a bigger binder because we're just gonna keep expanding. We only, we're only we only gonna have this one until August. We'll get a new one in August because she won't be doing her little ladybug page with numbers one to six. She'll be doing probably numbers one to a hundred and we'll have to find more activities for that. There's a bunch of websites. I got all of these from different websites, from totschooling.com, some are from pbs.com, some of them are from just random websites I came across. I can put links down to let you guys print these off. A lot of them are just Google pages. I searched for something that matched her goals, like we have the goal page here, and I knew she needed to be able to break down these letters and to build CBC words, so I made that myself. And then identifying patterns we don't have in here because I have like a pattern board, um, puzzle boards and a Melissa and Doug kit that we do separately. And she knows her shapes, she knows her colors, she knows her patterns. That's not something she knows, that's not something I need in here. I think your binder should be catered to what your child needs to learn. My daughter's mastered, the things that she's mastered are not in here. But, um, like reading stories, we have a library, we have stories all the time that are not in here. But um, we could even put something in here that has main character, this, that, and the other. She could like have like a felt storyboard or something put in here, or Velcro, obviously. And then um, I know my address. So that's another page I need to add in here. I need to add an I know my address page. She knows her phone number, she knows her name. So she knows, Kinsey, if you ever get lost, you go up and you say, my name is mm -mm, your full name so they can know where you belong. And she knows her number, her mommy's number. And she can write her first name. So she knows her numbers one to 10. She's met all her goals. Everything in your binder should be based on your goals, based on what your child needs to learn and based on interest-led learning. I cannot stress that enough. It should be interest-led learning. She loves ladybugs, unicorns, rainbows. I put as much of that in here as I can. Uh, our charts, we have ladybug erasers that we do with these. She loves cookies. She loves animals. She loves doing like February, all these pages that are February based themed, I'm gonna print out some March leprechaun ones and then in April is her birthday. So I'll do a bunch of birthday pages and I'm not gonna change all these papers, obviously. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with having hearts, but like the Valentine's Day math ones, it's just more interesting. She's done these, she's done this page so many times. She's mastered it, she knows it. Now, if we could find a unicorn or a leprechaun page, that'd be wonderful. Make it more interesting, because there's only four problems here. And um, she's, she masters the problems and you need to move on. And then uh, as she gets better, like with the monkey page, we started out with just five monkeys here. So we had big monkeys and then um, she mastered that. So we shrunk them down and we got 10 monkeys. And then we're gonna keep expanding and learning and as she gets better, we're going to keep adjusting things to fit what she needs. And she's obsessed with unicorns this year. This is her favorite background that she picked out. So we put it back on this binder. And then this is a picture, her favorite picture, because it's her favorite dress. She wore this dress in Easter of 2020, April last year. So that's coming up soon. She'll have another Easter dress. But she was really upset that this headband is cut off. That uh, the picture cut off her headband and it cut off her unicorn shoes. She was mad. 
So just to appease her, I might have to uh, have this reprinted and shrunk down. But uh, she loves her binder. She loves her binder cover. It's the color she wants, the background she wants. This is just, I printed, I found this background on Google and I printed it once with no words and then I put it upside down in my printer and then I printed a blank Word document with these words on it to make this title. And then this, I just, um, as a picture, I printed for like, what, 10 cents or something at Walgreens. And then I taped it there so it stays in place. This little tape behind it. And then, it's hard to do with one hand. You insert it and here is her cover. And then I need to go get stickers because she has another binder but I need to get like a, a P glitter sticker for here for preschool. So she loves this binder. She gets this binder out just to play with, to do the activities, the Velcro activities every day just to do for fun. And then she does some activities with mommy um, to get her ready for school in August. And she will be prepared. She'll be ready. I have all the faith in the world. She'll know everything she needs to know and, and then some. And then I can't wait. This is something that we might have as a system in place for a long time. Um, we might not always keep Velcro interactive activities, but all these laminated pages. We used to have like just the sheet protectors from the dollar store, but um, as we erase or as she erases, it would just, um, the top would get bent, the page would get bent. It's, these are more durable and sturdy, and you can't really add the Velcro dots to just a sheet protector. So. Yes, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you guys enjoyed looking over all of our activities. I hope you got some ideas over how to help your child. And I hope you guys have a great day.